So, did you catch everything that's going on? <laughs> of course not, and it's okay if you didn't. There's so much going on now, you, you, your head would be spinning if you tried. Okay, and that's sort of not the point. The point is to watch, see what's going on, and to inform about the stuff that sort of bleeds through and seems more imperative than the next. Alright, so you guys probably heard about the power outage that happened in Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay. Okay, uh... Pretty big, pretty big event. Happened on a Sunday, okay, happened on Father's Day. Also happened during their gubernatorial election, so very suspicious there. People are wondering what happened, how it happened. They wake up on a Sunday morning, with, which otherwise was poised to be peaceful, and then they have these uh, power outages. And 50 million people, okay, up to three countries, 50 million people were affected by this. So this is huge, this is huge. It's one of the hugest... Uh, nation or uh, areas in that that region there so that's absolutely incredible that that happened and again it happened on this sunday so had it happened on a, a weekday it would have been would have been much much worse okay so gas stations they weren't pumping okay they weren't able to pump uh electricity was out people were voting by the light of their phones so this is pretty interesting, okay? And not only that, but that happened in tandem with the nationwide cash uh, cash register outage at Target, okay? Which was which is pretty interesting as well because out here in America, we've had uh, power outages, banking outages, retail outages, and these things are now just becoming more and more common, it appears. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to deny that there's something going on in that sense, okay? Uh, this one with Target happening with the power outage, you know, in tandem and just a few months ago we had that outage at wills fargo's banks and, and a couple in between there so that's interesting in that sense and not to mention the fact that we're going to war with iran uh and yeah i i, I called it i mean here it, it's not like it took some some big to do to be able to call it like I've said before, I use Occam's razor uh, throughout these political diatribes, right? So when a politician's mouth is moving, for me, they're lying to you. This includes Trump. So no, not everything Trump touches turns to gold for me. I'm not a forever Trumper in that way. All right, I'm just a patriot with conservative values, and I'm pretty ticked off to see that these people are just being complacent and pacified as this agenda is just pushed over on us more and more. But this Iran thing, when Trump said he didn't want war with Iran, he's not a guy who likes war... I took him at the exact opposite, so I knew we were going to war. I knew it. So when we hear with these things like Mike Pompeo, what he's pushing, okay, and, and they've basically what we're talking about is, a, is an event that we don't know exactly what happened, but they're pointing the finger at this event saying Iran's responsible, yep, they're the ones who's doing it. So we're going to war with them. I knew that we were going to war the moment Trump said we weren't, okay? So with Pompeo, you know, this guy's talking about how in the CIA, you know, he lies, cheats, steals. So you know, he's he's just admitting it, right? And we already know that they do. So this this shouldn't be any big surprise. The the sad reality is is that they're able to snooker us into this stuff by manufacturing our consent through this mainstream media mouthpiece. They continue with their mantras until uh, they get the they get the people on board with it. But there's so many false impetus and false pretexts that has come in the wake of these things or before these things to show that they're not 100% entirely organic. And I think that that's the same thing here. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of this stuff that happens with these wars, they're not about oil or they're not a, or they're definitely not about what they say they're about i think oil is is again another falsity i think there's a lot of stuff going on in the middle east that uh, people don't necessarily look at and a lot of it is esoteric okay if we look at all the nations that america has bases in all these all these nations in the middle east where america's got their their bases and stations at and it's not just out there either it's, it's just it's all over okay I think that they're protecting something. I think that they're hiding something. What history and things suggest is that the Tigris, okay, the Euphrates, the Fertile Crescent, that's where essentially uh, the bulk of life started, okay, and the rest of civilizations and societies has been one of westward movement, all right? So I think there's a lot of uh, architecture, a lot of artifacts, a lot of things that are going on over there uh, that can give us a good direction of where we've been because we how we, we won't know where we're going until we have a good idea of where we've been and there's a lot of ancient evidence that suggests that there was more going on than just the human condition all right uh, thousands of years ago okay and 
I think the powers that be are trying to obfuscate exactly what had happened so that they can control a new narrative, okay, so a new narrative can unfold. Because I think a lot of these wars that deal with the Middle East, I mean, there's, there was a lot of suspicious stuff that happened. For example, some of the destroying of these ancient artifacts, um, ransacking of certain museums. And in these cases, you know, they bypassed expensive-looking fakes and went straight for uh, certain basements uh, where they had these troves of items, okay? So a lot of people believe that some of these these hits were inside jobs where we were destroying uh, architecture and statues and artifacts. They said it was, you know, rogue factions of Taliban and terrorists and, you know, pick your pick your poison. But in reality, if it was just these rogue factions of terrorists and, you know, pick your pleasure... How would they bypass the expensive looking fakes? How would they know exactly where to go in these museums to target certain artifacts to either steal or destroy? It's, it's, it's telling because I think that these artifacts and I think that this architecture and the, the stuff that we see over there in these ruins in these lands, I think they paint a picture. They give us an idea of what was unfolding here on Earth uh, a, a while ago outside of simply the human condition. Okay, I think that there was outside influences uh, during those days and that what we see now is is a result of that and we're sort of trending back to that okay so i think that there's a i think there's more going on in the middle east than just oil i think that they're trying to obfuscate some of the um ancient, ar ancient architecture some of the structures and some of the artifacts that hint at what was really going on what truly was happening back in the day and that they're destroying strategically specifically some of those um, architectures and artifacts so that if they are going to basically debut a new narrative they don't want to have anything that can be contrary to that anything that's going to contradict that later because I think we're poised to see the great deception I think what we're getting ready to see here forget everything you know that, that's going on, on on the geopolitical scale you know that's small stuff compared to the paradigm shift I think we're getting ready to experience uh, for example I've talked about it before but I think that you know if we see an, another phoenix flyover for example you know the phoenix lights was it was um happened back a few years ago at night where what looked like this huge ship was hovering over the city, Phoenix, Arizona, okay? And uh, just imagine if that happens except during the day, okay? Or long enough for any of the news crews to get some really good shots. I think that the narrative the powers that be would roll out on us is going to be one that's pre-packaged and controlled, and they want it to make they want to make sure if something like that does happen or when something like that does happen, it's going to be something that they'll be able uh, to coax, okay? Something that they'll be able to sort of uh, to control in a way and mitigate uh, the response. And I think that we've been seeing that conditioning process for a while now. At, in one direction, it was going the other way, where oh no, there's nothing out there because they don't want us to think about anything outside of the context they've prepared for us and now you know with the star wars and star trek and everything you know the, just before the turn of the century it's a conditioning process in the other way so that our response will be more predictable they'll be better able to manage or mitigate uh exactly how things will will devolve after after the, the big disclosure okay i don't know if we're talking about again i think a lot of the the stuff that they're going to debut on us i think it depends on us so when we're talking about disclosure i think a lot of that depends on us on uh, whether we're going to accept a savior scenario or you know they're going to come down and eat a space invader type thing i think a lot of that depends on us but we're definitely undergoing a conditioning process and so are you know the militaries and armies uh, of the united states and hey the rest of the world uh, the rest of the world's nations have already declassified and revealed some of their ufo files and some of their more esoteric uh, stuff and the united states fell in line with that as well so i again with where even the navy is changing the way that they do their reports on ufo sightings and now uh, pilots are getting interviews on mainstream news media so you know something has changed they're really warming up to this idea now something's definitely changing and i think that we're undergoing a perception shift in the public so that they'll be able to better like i said mitigate the narrative or the response to the narrative when they decide to to debut that whenever they decide to debut it and i think a lot of the stuff that deals with the middle east and things like that they, that it ties into that in a way where they're going to be able uh, to to more effectively uh, keep a keep a handle on how we'll respond to it.